This episode of the Operatory Podcast is brought to you by Opera VR Digital Nitrous, the immersive patient anxiety melting experience proven to be as effective as nitrous oxide with no drugs. True drug free sedation with Opera VR. Go to digitalnitrous.com. Welcome to the Operatory Podcast, the podcast about burying the dinosaurs in dentistry, moving past outdated technology and procedures to find a better way. With me today, as always, providing the very important patient perspective is David Pryor, drinking Mountain Dew, and what is that, bubbly water, making them dance? Yeah. Thanks for being here, sir. Hey, Brian. How's it going? It's going great. And we have an amazing special guest today. We have David Pegg, who is the Chief Development Officer for Dental Care Alliance. David, you have a unique story on how you got into dentistry and being part of Dental Care Alliance. So could you share with our audience how you actually got into dentistry in the first place? Yeah, sure. Um, it is, a, it is a, bit, a bit of a unique path. Um, I spent 17 years as a private equity partner uh, investing in businesses like Dental Care Alliance. So uh, provider, doctor, dental-led businesses, um, and uh, the for me as an investor, it was the value proposition was always pretty straightforward, uh, which was a big reason why I gravitated towards um, towards uh, businesses like that. Which was healthcare is a local business. Uh, patients go to see um, the doctor, the name on the door, um, and. So long as that doctor and that name on the door is synonymous with uh, a high, highly clinical, uh, high clinical quality environment, a great patient experience, uh, that you create a uh, a repeat uh, patient in this case. And so, um, I ultimately invested in a number of businesses, or were involved uh, either as an investor or as a board member in a number of businesses like um, Dental Care Lines, and uh, about. 24 months ago, uh, was approached by uh, our investor, Harvest Partners, who I had uh, been peers with uh, in the private equity world, uh, and they asked me, would you, um, would you consider coming in and helping lead our dental business and being a member of senior management? Uh, and I said, uh, it sounds like you just asked me to be an operator, and you know, that's not something I've done before. And they said, well, why don't you come and listen? Um, we really think that you'll like what you hear. And uh, to be honest, the more I really peeled the layers back of the onion and um, and learned about Dental Care Alliance, its history, its positioning in the market, how it was not a consumer-facing organization, but a doctor-facing organization, and that they understood the value proposition, which was this was about supporting the doctor and 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 in that support in supporting the doctor in providing care to the patient, uh, and as obvious as that may sound, uh, that's not always the case. Um, and so really the more I learned about Dental Care Alliance, the fact that uh, it's very much on the Mount Rushmore of dental support organizations, it's been around for close to 30 years, um, had the value proposition right, and was really populated by people who cared. They wanted to be there. They wanted to be a part of the continuum of providing a lifetime of healthy smiles to patients. Uh, that was very heartening. That was very encouraging. Uh, and in addition to that, when I looked at really our our turnover in terms of doctor uh, our doctor turnover, uh, it's among the lowest, if not the lowest, in the industry. Uh, and that's always a great leading indicator that when people uh, affiliate with Dental Care Alliance and we're partners, um, and we can get to that in a minute, um, that they want to stay there. They want to remain. Um, they want to continue to to be a part of that partnership for a, for the long term. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm here, uh, 18 months in. Uh, so I think uh, while not a total total newbie, um, still very much a, a newbie. Um, I know enough to be dangerous, uh, but I'm pretty sure the two of you will probably forget more about dentistry than I'll ever learn. So um, oh, Dave forgets uh, everything it's, about it's everything. Been a great so experience. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I lose every bit of knowledge every day. <laughs> I'm a blank slate. Well, I, well I'm, I'm happy to pick up that knowledge. So. <laughs> well, you know, you, you said several things that I think uh, are fantastic for the audience to hear. I know I know we've talked about it before on the podcast, but the there's this overwhelming sort of viewpoint of DSOs as being like being spoken as DSOs, as if as if all all DSOs are the same and. And as as you've said before, uh, 
David, that 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 uh, if you've seen one DSO, you've seen one DSO, and I think if I'm going to restate kind of what you said, it was it's more along that what attracted you to D- DCA is that as an investor in DSOs and, and in, in group practices, there are unique things that drew you to DCA. Is that fair to say? That's absolutely fair to say. Okay, and and some of that is leading indicators, like you said, like turnover in dentists. Um, but and I know you've mentioned before, sort of the cultural aspect, which you know it's, it's funny when all businesses have you know if you go to Target, it's going to be different than Nordstrom's or or different uh, different car companies of different cultures. And so to think that groups of dental practices are not unique is 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 you know I look back because that's that used to be my viewpoint. Uh, that I'm like, why, why did I even think that before? And so, w- could you describe what from your from your 18 month old toddler <laughs> career at DCA, kind of what what you view the culture of DCA to be? Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and happy. There's a lot to unpack there, um, but happy to to certainly share uh, the homework I did on the front end before stepping in officially, and then really what I've experienced. Uh, since coming on board in October of 2017. As I mentioned earlier, it the thing that definitely struck me is uh, they understood the um, the value proposition that they played in terms of really plugging into DCA, plugging into the practice and not the practice having to plug into DCA. Hmm. Um, and really there as a silent partner, I, as I mentioned before, the the name on the door never changing. We're very much a, a house of brands, um, but really plugging into the practice as a as a partner and taking the infrastructure uh, and the support services that have been built in Sarasota, Florida, um, and the experiences that come with that over the last uh, 28 years, and really bringing that to bear um, to the benefit of the practice and the doctors and the staff. Um, I often use the the phrase that we're there to unlock value that the dentist and their staff may not otherwise be able to do on their own. And if they are able to, or they want to try to, it's likely going to take them longer and be a little bit more, you know, there'll be an expensive tuition associated with it because, um, you know, it's not, it's not, I, I think, a, a, a foreign thought to, to believe that they're not going to get it right hundred percent of the time out of the gate. And so there'll be a tuition there in terms of a learning curve, um, we've, we've, we've paid that tuition over 28 years, right? We've, we've, uh, we've navigated, you know, through over trip wires and through pitfalls. Um, and so there's a lot of learning that has come with that, um, that we can again, provide sage counsel to the doctors about how, to, how do we want to grow, right? What's the, what's the right growth path? What's the right growth strategy? Um, really understanding nuances about markets, um, and does it make sense to uh, de novo a location versus does it make sense to affiliate with another brand or specialty in a particular market? But really tying back to you know your question in terms of the culture, the culture is very much one about being there to support the dentist and their staff, um, being a value-added partner and being able to pull levers that are not, you know, I think a, a lot of the common perception, if you will, is a dental support organization comes in, centralizes functions um, to reduce costs uh, because of infrastructure that they've built in a, in a particular uh, support center. And that's it. That's where, that's where it starts and stops. And we, we as an organization are very growth oriented. Um, and when I talk about growth, I talk about revenue growth. Um, and so being able to um, plug into the practice and pull levers from a, a growth perspective early on um, that unlock revenue growth uh, for the practice and the and the providers and their staff that they otherwise can't do on their own um, or may not be able to do on their own in, in most cases. So um, that's really what struck me is I think a lot of dental support organizations, and, and there's a lot to unpack there in terms of what is a DSO. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he, one of the things that I've observed certainly in, in the last 18 months is uh, a lot of people marketing themselves as a dental support organization, but lack the, um, the infrastructure and the experience to appropriately support and scale um, practices. And so it turns very much, the conversation with, with organizations like that turns very much into one about a transaction. 
uh, because they're they're very focused on wanting to get to scale. Um, we uh, have plenty of scale. We have plenty of infrastructure. Uh, our our approach is very much how can we be a resource to the practice, um, and how do we pick the right partners who are focused on clinical quality, focused on patient experience, and want to grow. Um, because if we get those three things right, and the culture of the practice aligns with the culture of our organization, which is again very much a patient first, valuing your people type of approach to to the practice of dentistry, then that's really where we want to drive. Um, the building of a relationship. That's where we want to spend time really unpacking how can we be a resource to the dentist and, uh, or dentist and their staff and their practice. Um, that is what struck me as a real differentiator uh, as it relates to Dental Care Alliance compared to, compared to the, 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 the DSO landscape at large. So Dave, uh, this is Dave. Um, so one, you talked about culture quite a bit in there and from the patient side of things, I, I think that's something that people would uh, really appreciate is going into, uh, they buy into a culture of a practice, right? And so if you're, if a doctor is becoming a member of, of DCA and you're, it sounds to me like you're looking to keep the culture intact and just take the hard labor part of managing the practice out of there and centralizing it in Florida and then letting the culture uh, continue on and not really making a huge impact on it. Am I, am I right with that? Yeah, by and large, that's, that's correct, Dave. Uh, the, 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 the patient will never know. The na- as I said, um, the name on the door doesn't change. I, one of the questions that we get a lot is uh, from dentists and their staff is, so um, we become partners on Friday. What does Monday look like? Hmm. And my response to that is you walk in Monday and Monday looks a lot like Friday. Um, and your patients, right, the only thing that your patients should ever observe is wow, um, geez, Dr. Laskin, I, I noticed that you added specialty or I noticed that you uh, have extended hours or I noticed that you hired another provider or you opened up another location, but I'm still getting the, you know, the high quality um, clinical experience, the great patient experience that I've always gotten um, in the past. And so for us, right, the from a patient experience, not much changes other than they're going to start to notice the growth um, going forward, um, versus, you know, people ask me, well, Jesus, uh, corporate dentistry. And I tell them, I I can't imagine anything less corporate than partnering with dental care Alliance, because as I mentioned before, the, we are not a consumer facing organization. We're a dentist facing organization. And so, um, the name on the door doesn't change. The brand remains the same. We're there to perpetuate um, everything that gravitated us to the dentist, their staff, and their brand in the first place. Um, and we're just there to help be a catalyst for growth, to leverage what has been built and, uh, and create additional regional density or extension of brand in a particular market that, again, you know, not, not to sound like a broken record, but that otherwise you know, um, may not be able to be done on their own uh, if, they were to, if they were to try and blaze their own trail. So Culture is very much a big part of our um, of our approach to things. One of the discussions, as you guys can imagine, that that happens often um, is around valuation. Um, and my comment to that is, you know, valuation is that's that that is that's dollars and cents. That's that's arithmetic, um, and happy, and that's an important component, and it should be. But if our organizations are not culturally aligned, and that doesn't mean that we need to have the exact same prescription in terms of our outlook on life or on the world or on dentistry, but our circles have got to be close to touching, if not you know, overlapping in, or, uh, in some respects. If we're not culturally aligned, then you, know, you can see the greatest thing on a piece of paper from a number perspective, but the partnership is probably not going to last because culturally we just view the world you know we view the the approach to providing care differently um, or maybe the practice doesn't value patient experience or clinical quality it's not going to work out um, and I I have those discussions on the front end every day with with doctors um, and their advisors and and their staff uh, because it's it's such an important component um, if we're culturally aligned um, then 
uh, you know, the, the next part of it is math. Um, we can generally make the math work um, uh, around realistic expectations. But so much of this comes down to, you know, do we do we value the same things? Do we value that clinical quality? Do we value that patient experience? And do we want to grow? Um, and for us, right, that is such a big part of our culture um, over the last 28 years. Well, and I, I would... I'm kind of living proof of that. I feel like because you know I I affiliated at the end of the uh, at the end of last year. So, Wait, you so, did? Yeah, did you oh, know? I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you already oh. forgot, man. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna be in the corner crying. But 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 you know, I think w- probably the ha- the happy accident from our podcast is that it was a relatively easy conversation. I think from my end for sure because. You have my whole philosophy out on the podcast, right? You can all you need to do is go back and listen to Dave yammer on for for, <laughs> for fifteen minutes at a time, and uh, whatever Dave, Dave Pryor, <laughs> and 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 and, uh, and you kind of know how we do things, and so I think it's uh, you know at, at my practice, and so it was a I was not looking at affiliating with the DSO at the time, like you said, it was such a good cultural fit, and I saw the upside. That uh, I mean, that I think, and I've talked about it, uh, like when I when we a previous podcast that we did with Mitch Olin from DCA, that that the leadership team, the people at DCA, I've been so impressed with. And you know, when you talk about culture, you're really just talking about the people that are there and the way I I, I view it as the way the people there view the view the world and and kind of makes them tick, right? And yep. I'm kind of I think uh, the quintessential example of. Uh, uh, somebody joining with DCA because there was a good cultural fit. Because I don't know too many other practices where you can go in and this guy's been. Well, there's probably quite a few. There's a lot of dental podcasts now, but <laughs> but you know, uh, listening to you can get the perspective. And and if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. And I can and I can tell you from being on the other side of of the affiliation that what you said is exactly true. The, the most shocking thing about affiliating is that it how little things have changed post transaction right from the from the operational patients don't notice a difference and uh and it's been such a good cultural fit that there's been really no there's really been not tension or you know whatever whatever you would think that would go into sort of post affiliation with a with a larger group so so thank you no thank you you've you have been a uh, you've been a fabulous um, addition and extension of, of what DCA represents, um, again, but you know, I, this all comes down to the culture, right. Of what you've created and the culture, uh, that you, that you represent, that your people represent. And the fact that it was consistent with the culture that DCA, um, really looks to embody on a daily basis. And when you find consistency there, it seems to me, right. When you find consistency around culture, um, my experience is that everything else falls into place because um, now you've probably solved the hardest thing, um, which is, you know, are we compatible partners? Uh, and if we're compatible partners and we we have a, a similar outlook on um, not just the patient experience and clinical quality, but then the desire to grow, um, that is, I would tell you, you know, more than half the battle. Um, and, and frankly, right, those are practices and those are opportunities and relationships that we want to gravitate to and spend time because time, right, more so than even capital, time is our most precious resource oh, and how sure. we spend it and with whom we spend it is really important. Um, so getting, you know, these, getting these topics out on the table very early on and spending time, I would tell you that's the other thing. We are very much, a, you know, as I mentioned, a relationship-driven organization. Uh, and being able to sit down, right, with you, Brian, being able to spend time with you, some of the folks on, on our team spending time with you, right, further just reinforced our desire to want to partner with you um, and really support what you, you know, what you've built and what you want to build going forward uh, in, in the Minneapolis marketplace. So, you know that when we when we see situations unfold like that, it gets us very excited and very confident in the prospects for a successful uh, partnership with with a with a dentist and in this case you. So oh, it's well, been it's early, but it's been great. Really has you been a fabulous ambassador. Well, I I, I appreciate it. thank you, and I, I I mean and likewise, it's been great working with you for sure. And and I I I hope that people who are listening to our podcast can really. 
I mean, this one would be, uh, I think, a good one to take a second listen through because you said a lot of things very concisely that people may have, if you're like, if you're daydreaming for a second, you wouldn't catch on. And I think you also uh, were very gracious when you were talking about other DSOs not being necessarily set up to support people. I think there's just, it's very a very hot topic now, just to like get a bunch of practices together without having the support system in place. And I know from firsthand experience that uh, DCA is uh, is just a, just a great organization. So so thank thank you very much, and thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you, guys, Dave and Brian. Uh, I think, you, as I mentioned uh, at the outset, I think you guys do a great job. So uh, not to, uh, again, reiterate the, uh, the line, but uh, long-time listener, first-time caller, uh, <laughs> and hope to be back on again. Well, definitely. And uh, right now, Dave, is, his head is even a little bit bigger. <laughs> I don't that's know if right. that's possible. And I Come think on. that's because of the Mountain Dew. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Tim. You bet. Thanks, thanks guys. All right. Thanks. I also want to remind you to rate and review us wherever you're listening to this podcast. If you have suggestions or comments, please visit theoperatory.com and drop us a line. Again, I'm Dr. Brian Laskin, host of The Operatory. Thanks for listening. I look forward to speaking with you next week.